Well, welcome to the Papa George Policy Update. Today we're going to be talking about alternative energy, and I have as our first guest Damian Gardley, who's the sales director of Compact Power Inc., and the engineering director, Martin Klein, is also with us. And uh, the first subject is going to have to do with the future, which for that future we see a good deal number of electric powered cars out there. And that means we've got to be in the battery business. Now what we do not want to do is trade dependence on Middle East oil with dependence on uh, Far East batteries. Now in this country we don't have uh, the ability right now to mass produce lithium ion batteries. We depend on China, Japan, Korea, and uh, that's why last December uh, the legislature passed uh, a bill that I was very much involved in, in fact brokered in the final hours of a 25-hour session, uh, some tax credits that would permit us to begin uh, the battery business in the U.S. and specifically in Michigan. So I'll turn it over to uh, Damien and sure. you'll tell us what's been going on. Sure. Well, well, first of all, I'd just like to thank you for having us both out today. Uh, big proponents of, of what you did with the House Bill 6611. Uh, just a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, at, at Compact Power, as you know, we are building the future for lithium batteries right here in Michigan. We're actually located in the heart of Michigan, right in Troy. Yeah, which is where I live. That's right. wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Great place to live, even better place to work. Yeah. So and what we basically do at Compact Power, we're, we're a subsidiary of LG Chem, which is one of the foreign uh, uh, manufacturers of batteries. But what we do is integrate those cells into battery packs, which is what actually goes into the vehicles. So we've got Michigan-based technology going into some of these electric vehicles. And, and uh, it may be a good time to go through some of the sure, slides that we brought right in for you. Sure. So, so basically, as I said, we are a subsidiary of LG Chem, wholly owned, but we're right here in, in the very heart of Michigan. Mm -hmm. And we build battery systems that are high power, high energy, low cost, and safe. Mm -hmm. So it, we're really driving uh, the next step in battery manufacturing. So it, you see two of the four uh, of the leadership group here today, mm -hmm. and Martin Klein and myself. Uh, we both have uh, extensive, extensive experience in automotive. Uh, our parent company, LG Chem, is the number five producer of lithium batteries in the world. Mm -hmm. So just bring a depth of knowledge, both from the automotive and the battery manufacturing uh, arena here to Michigan. Uh, one of the important things to understand too, Senator, is, is that it's not only uh, important that the sales are manufactured here at some point, but the leading step to getting sales manufactured here is actually manufacturing pack and creating sure. pack business, sure. which House Bill 6611 is going to enable. Mm -hmm. So it's going to go a long way to enabling uh, you know, companies like Compact Power to get a leg up and be more competitive in this market. There's no magic bullet that says it has to be Korea or Japan or China or India that's manufacturing sales. It's just been, uh, until this point, uncompetitive in the marketplace, and there hasn't been a real commitment or demand here for HEV vehicles. Well, we, we need the uh, battery production here, and it's not just an economic uh, argument. It's a national security argument. I, I don't believe you can justify this purely on economic grounds. We're going to have some costs on the front end, which is why we passed that package of tax credits to make it possible for you to begin doing what we need to do in this country. Sure, sure. And one of the things and you'll see in the, uh, one of the later slides is that we actually uh, are doing a, a thorough investigation. And it, it's very hard. We try to decouple it from being an emotional issue just because we are a business and we, we like to do what makes economic sense. Mm -hmm. But we obviously are American-based business and our priority is here. Mm -hmm. And when it makes good economic sense, as well as good strategic sense to be here in the States. You're going to see not only us, but others, I'm sure, sure. committing to uh, resources for cell manufacturing here. So uh, you can see here some of the uh, recent achievements of Compact Power. Uh -huh. we, we most notably have had the Chevy Volt win, which, again, House Bill 6611 goes a long way to helping both GM and their supply base mm -hmm. uh, for packs and cells. 
Uh, the uh, USABC contract, which is the United States uh, Automotive Battery Consortium, uh, has given us two awards for HEVs as well as PHEVs, so a stamp of approval from the federal government. So those are DOE funds that we okay. received there. Hold on, the acronyms are getting ahead yep, of us. Yep. HEV is? HEV is a hybrid electric vehicle, and I apologize. Oh. When, okay, when you get and in the next one is? Uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Okay. You also hear some some catchphrases that are floating around. Uh, E-Rev, which is an extended range electric vehicle. Okay, we're just going to yeah. talk about yeah. electric cars that either yeah. plug in or don't. There you okay. Go. There you go. <laughs> Next slide. There you go. <laughs> so th this is kind of the the progression as we see it, Senator, on uh, what makes sense to bring into the states and how, how you would actually lay that out. So you can see there, m much of the research was already done in the states for lithium ion battery packs. Mm -hmm. There just hasn't been a commitment in the states at the automotive level uh, of any substantiality for HEV or hybrid electric or electric vehicles to date. Now we're seeing that change. Obviously okay. we're seeing a huge shift. So you see uh, pack level uh, it produces the least amount of investment, the least amount of risk, mm -hmm. uh, which is why it makes sense to start as, at that level for the stepping stone, move on to sell, electro raw material even coming here as well. Now, you know, that's how I cut the deal. It, yeah. it's, you produce, you get some money. If it yeah. doesn't work, you stop. Absolutely. Okay. That's the fair way to do it. All right. That's the fair way to do it. Absolutely. And I think Martin wanted to speak just a little bit to you just about the technologies sure. that we offer at Compact Power. Yeah, yeah to get started, Senator, and again, I, I echo Damien's thanks for having us here. Uh, the fundamental building block to a battery, and I brought a few samples of, of modules and uh, the cell itself. This would be a typical cell uh, that would go in a battery. And the reason that uh, we're so excited to be working with LG Chem is because their cells are the safest in the world. Uh, they combine a very safe chemistry that doesn't lend itself to thermal runaway, which you may have read in the past year or two of uh, uh, laptop batteries. A few have gone into thermal runaway with, with not good consequences. Uh, this has chemistry in it that prevents that from happening, and also it has a, what's called the separator in it. And if I may digress a bit, the separator separates the anode and cathode layers in a battery. Because uh -huh. uh, you have to allow the ions to pass through in order to get the electrical sure. circuit completed. Uh, with standard separators, they shrink under heat. So if there's an internal short in the battery, like a piece of metal somehow gets in there, causes a short circuit, a standard separator will start to heat up, shrink, cause a bigger and bigger gap, which in turn gets hotter and hotter and leads to runaway. Our separator doesn't do that. So if there is an internal short, it, it stays in that size and the cell will continue to work. Do you hold a patent? Uh, does LG have a patent on that particular thing? Yes, there's several patents in the chemistry and in the separator and as you mentioned the geometry as well. This laminated package looks a lot different than your typical flashlight battery mm -hmm. which is your where is cylindrical. This is, we're able to package this a lot easier and a lot more flexibly than you can uh, package a cylindrical cell and some of these modules show the, that flexibility. For example, uh, this would be f uh, a module for a large HEV or plug-in vehicle, and a typical pack can have anywhere from four, six, even 12 of these modules, depending on, on how much energy you need to store. The other module there is more of a HEV or a hybrid electric vehicle that doesn't plug in, and that, that's based on power, and the cell shape is actually a little different for that. So we are able to customize our, cell, our, our shapes. So we have a very safe cell as the building block. And then we move up into the modules, which is a collection of cells. Uh, to show some of the complexity, we're not done yet. We then have electronics that help measure and control the state of charge of the battery, that measure the voltage and the current and the temperatures of the battery so we can keep them in a good operating position to maintain their life. Um, the assembly of these modules was done in Troy. The design and layout of this circuit board was done in Troy, and in fact, the uh, the manufacturing uh, of this was actually done, I believe, up in uh, Auburn Hills. Mm -hmm. So we, we bring a lot of value, engineering value, to the mm -hmm. state. Um, moving on, then, these modules are then assembled into a full pack where we attach the high voltage bus bars, very thick cabling for the high currents, mm -hmm. and then the thinner wires for all the control voltage uh, circuitry and so on. Mm -hmm. We package them here, we test them here. Uh, we write the test procedures and we perform the test uh, plans themselves. Uh, and that shows sort of the complexity of the pack itself. 